And welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another edition of GMAT Club's YouTube series. This time we are doing a debrief. My name is Evan, and for those of you who don't know me by that name, most of you should at this point, given how many of these videos I've done. My form name is Nightblade354. And before you ask, before you roll your eyes and say, oh my god, not this guy again, uh, I'm thinking the same thing. I mean, I, even I wish I looked more like Brad Pitt. I wake up every day, I look in the mirror and say, ugh, not this face again. Uh, it is true that I've done a lot of videos this week, probably more so uh, than I have in the past. So if you're sick of me, I'm sick of me too. You can write all the hate mail you want. I, I take it as a compliment at this point. Today we're joined by David. David scored a remarkable 770 on his first take with the GMAT, and we're here to hear his story and how you too can score that score. It's an incredible feat. We wish David the best of luck with his future applications and his future success. But in the meantime, let's hear from the man himself. So David, without further ado, let's hear a quick intro. Who are you and why are you here today, aside from mm -hmm. punishment? Hello, everyone. Thanks, even for a great introduction. Um, I'm from Georgia originally, and I still live here, but I plan to continue my studies in the U.S. Um, uh, and I took GMAT for my future MBA. Mm, uh, yeah, uh, my bachelor's degree was in business, uh, Bachelor of Business Administration, uh, concentration is finance. Uh, I have more than three years work experience and I just saw that it was time to um, take Jima seriously and uh, yeah, like um, I studied about three, four months, uh, really concentrated. Um, I spent a lot of time, uh, I put a lot of energy, but in the end, as you said, it's like ended very well for me and I would be more than happy to share my experience to answer the questions that the fellow GMAT uh, takers might have and probably help them some, somehow. Wonderful to hear. And by the way, no pressure to you, but the world famous GMAT Ninja did comment. He wishes you the very best and says congratulations. Uh, the fact he's that a he's superstar. Here. He's my favorite GMAT <laughs> teacher. I should, I should like, I have no affiliation, nothing, but like, he's just my favorite GMAT teacher. When it comes to sentence correction, when it comes to verbal in general, like he, he's just superstar. Everybody knows him. So like, yeah. Yes, we do. Uh, and again, no pressure that he's here watching you or me for that matter. Uh, Chuck, I'm, I'm sorry if I screw up. Uh, but with that said, let's dive into some questions. You've sort of, uh, <laughs> you're making him blush. Even I couldn't do that. Um, you've talked about a little bit about your background. You said you majored in business. You took the GMAT because you want your MBA. So that takes care of the first question, which is why did you decide to take this truly horrible test? I want to hear about your goals initially because 770 is an incredible score. So what was your goal in terms of score? And what was the timetable around that? Did you uh, get your, uh, did you get a 770 based on the timetable that you had put forward or did this take longer or shorter than you expected? Okay, um, at first I had uh, very high expectations. Uh, I had like, I wanted initially 770 or more. I knew that if I got 760, I would just, um, I would not cancel, but I would take uh, several times until I reached the higher score. I wanted, yeah, 770, 780, it was my target score uh, because I did my research. I also had my, like, uh, my peers um, who also scored very good scores and I had some reference points. I knew that I was capable of doing that. Uh, also, I took my first call uh, test um, uh, and I scored seven uh, and ten, uh, uh, like seven hundred ten points. Uh, and I knew that, and it was totally not totally cold. I just uh, reviewed the um, format of the exam, some uh, theory, but I didn't do a single OG question. Uh, so yeah, like I knew that from that point, I had some room to improve, especially in sentence correction, because I'm not as you probably already know I'm not a native speaker and uh, English mm -hmm. is actually not even my first foreign language is second foreign language so after Russian 
like Russian is my first foreign language. Uh, so yeah, like I'm not a professional English uh, grammar. Some um, yeah, I'm not very skillful in grammar. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and uh, um, sense correction was a real hassle for me. Uh, when it comes to like <clears throat> reading comprehension and or like the, some logic, uh, that was not really issue. But sense correction is very nuanced. Like, um, and everybody says that oh, it's more learnable, like and teachable. You can like, there is a finite uh, number of rules, but that's not totally true uh yeah even the gmat is very flexible with some rules you can see some with some old questions they might have different standards with the newer question they have different standards and they uh there are lots of gray zones it's not like the quant se um, section where it's either right or wrong and yeah i knew that i had to focus on a sentence correction and uh, to be honest uh, as i wrote in my uh brief on gmat club about 70% of my total prep time was dedicated to sentence correction. About 70%. Yeah, like, but I uh, literally like read the several times that Mahatan guides, then probably all the posts posted by Gmad Ninja. And yeah, lots of materials. Also, Target Test Prep has a great um, uh, verbal uh, sets correction part. Actually, I was a bit surprised because they are uh, positioning themselves as mostly quant uh, program but their uh sets co uh, sets correction is actually very good very well written um yeah I, so i took a, it took a lot of energy for me and by the way i also ordered um the enhanced core report after my um exam because i was very curious where i made mistakes and i made zero mistakes in <clears throat> Uh, re logical reasoning, reading comprehension, uh, and I just made two uh, mistakes in sentence correction. So yeah, I um, still after um, so much energy and time, I couldn't perfect it, but I, I, I was very near to perfection because I missed those uh, two points uh, in the end of the, like um, it was later questions, like maybe 20 something. Very nice. And so you've hit on actually a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about a little bit later and in greater detail. So I appreciate you uh, touching on them. It does sound like you hit your goal, uh, at least from a scoring perspective. Um, I, I didn't hear the timeline uh, or the time frame question, yeah. but uh, before I have you answer that, a few quick announcements. Uh, one, for those of you who are asking questions in the chat, those will be answered at the end if we do not hit on them. And uh, obviously, assuming time allows. The other announcement I want to make is that uh, both David and I, for whatever reason, if we experience Wi-Fi issues and the internet drops, we will rejoin as soon as possible. If either of us do drop, if it's David, I'll do my best to entertain you folks. I, I think I'm okay at that. And if I drop, David can answer some questions in the chat while I'm trying to reconnect. Uh, with all that said, David, I did not read your debrief, by the way. I... I like to go into these things completely blind so that way when I'm asking questions I can I can actually take a minute think about it and follow up with something that may or may not have been stated in your debrief but may be assumed and I don't want any of those biases or prejudices coming into this so uh, please don't take that personally uh, that didn't read your <laughs> debrief okay. just like I'm not going to take it personally that you didn't mention me as a verbal uh, superstar <laughs> just gotta swallow your pride on that one uh but <laughs> so goals in terms of uh timetable do you feel that you uh, first off, how long did you study for and was that the goal to get to the initial score of 770. Mm, uh, so it was uh very complicated at first i started studying uh about uh, like last february it was more than a year ago but as i said i started studying I read some uh, Mahatan guide theory just to know how what the exam is about, the formats, the question types, but didn't mm -hmm. solve any OG questions. And um, I went through the Mahatan guide, guides, all the guides in like two or three weeks and took a, a first uh, official mock test, scored 710, and then I had to, uh, I didn't have uh, any time to dedicate to GMAT because like, my job required we had a very big projects and it required lots of my time and i renewed my studies the the early november i guess 
uh, mm -hmm. or the late October. So I had effective like three, four months uh, mm -hmm. when I was really focused on it. And uh, yeah, like I, I really dedicated probably most of my free time uh, to the exam. And uh, yeah, uh, like I hit the, my, probably my target score, but I uh, still had some uh, spare time. So if I scored like 750 or 740, I still had time to like one or two months I could uh, dedicate to it. Um, so I could somehow increase my score to my target score. But uh, as long as it was okay, yeah. So I, I j I'm just um, preparing for TOEFL exam. Then I'll start uh, preparing my essays, motivation letters. So I just uh, started focusing on other things right now. Very nice. Okay, so we have the timetable. We have the great score again. First try, 770. Yeah. You mentioned your study habits, and that's actually the next question I want to get into. You mentioned you were working. You had a lot to do. How were you able to study? with your with, with your work schedule were you um committing two hours a day to the, in the morning were you committing two hours a day at night were you studying during your lunch break uh, what was that like yeah uh so i started working very early so um i didn't have the opportunity to learn at mornings but i recommend it on the weekends i started learning very early and i think that the mind is more fresh so if you have a opportunity or your work uh, isn't as restrictive as mine you can try uh, dedicating some time uh, very early because your mind is fresh and you, your memory works better and it's just good in general but most of the time um, i just um, i dedicated time in the evenings um, until i just fell asleep that, that was my schedule uh, when i went back <laughs> home yeah like uh, i said for studies and also i had a timer uh, so uh, lots of people like say that oh i will study four hours a day for example uh, but that four hours isn't four hours actually because lots of distractions i allow taking breaks breaks uh, between the sessions um, uh, for example when i um do like uh, 20 question drilling sentence sentence correction all advanced questions i need some time off so my mind somehow gets energy back mm -hmm. and i just had a timer to um actually know how many hours do i actually dedicate so i stopped the timer when i took a break and uh, it was like three three and a half hour uh, but uh, that was a net time like without breaks without uh, distractions it was like a totally focused time um so yeah on the on the weekends it, it was a bit more of course not a bit more mm -hmm. it was maybe like two times more maybe five even five and a half hours but uh, on the um, weekdays um yeah that was about three hours so for anybody asking in the chat how david was able to get such a great score in a couple of months of studying uh condensed studying that's the way to do it you have to commit three four five six hours a day of true studying to the gmat because if you don't unless you're albert einstein you're not getting above a 700 let alone a 750. it's just not going to happen you need to commit the time and resources to this test and david is a testament to that so david congratulations on that score again fairly impressive and amazing that you were able to really commit yourself to that study schedule uh, and that habit. It's amazing. Uh, I want to start at the beginning of your journey. So let's go back in time, not necessarily all the way back to February of last year, but when, uh, back to November when you really started studying full time. How long did you study until you did your first uh, CAT, your first practice test? what type of cat was it and what was the score uh so um no are you asking me about my first cold test y uh, your first uh mock test yeah first mock test uh i um as i said before um i uh studied about three weeks maybe i just went through uh Manhattan guides all of them like uh, all of the books i just read 
just like a novel, you know, and mm -hmm. made some practice questions in the end, but I did not make the recommended OG questions, uh, which Mahatan has. Uh, I never touched the OG because I um, just uh, reserved the book for the later reference. Uh, it was just like introdu introduction for me to GMAT format. And I took the first official MBA.com test uh, and it was 710 uh, score. Uh, it was, a, uh, I guess I got 49 in quantitative. So I knew that um, I had a good background in my like mess in general. I, I'm not uh, you know, yeah. from mess school or some technical oriented school, but in general from high school, I had a good foundation maybe. And yeah, it wasn't a big hassle for me. I knew that I should uh, focus more on, as I said, on English because the, the, that's not my strong uh, side. Um, uh, yeah, and I, I knew uh, on what to focus, on what to um, dedicate my time to, so yeah. Very nice, so that was your first mock test. If you recall, how many mock tests did you take throughout your studies? Uh, I took all of the mock tests that MBA.com offers, uh, the official mocks, uh, and also I took one Sigma mock test, uh, or it's EG Mat, I guess. Um, mm, uh, and I wanted to, I um, I took um, advice of many um, and many instructors on GMAT Club that you should focus on official tests. So I purchased, I purchased almost all the materials that MBA.com has. Uh, the mm -hmm. official stuff, I mean. I also, um, and I should mention that, I also purchased the paper tests. Uh, so um, um, MBA.com has very old paper tests uh, from 90s, maybe. Uh, it co it, it's a good um, news that it contains more questions than the modern tests, and it's paper-based. And yeah, it might have, um, for quantitative, it's not as advanced as uh, uh, new tests, but uh, you can actually, and then they have their conversion table, when you actually did uh, when you deduce your score from the like raw score and it's uh, quite um, um although it's uh, not it's a different algorithm obviously because it's paper-based test it's very um how to say you can approximate your score fairly mm -hmm. it's not uh, like very of the very off from the uh, new test it's uh, it's quite uh, accurate for me uh, I did all the paper tests also. It's a good practice. I really mm, recommend them and they are not really very expensive. Uh, there is a small problem that although MBA.com uh, and uh, Jim Mack claims that their uh, questions are not repeated, some questions are repeated um, or um, maybe um, maybe not so much are repeated, but they are rewarded uh, and you just... Uh, mm -hmm have that effect that, oh, I know that uh, question. But actually, it might be slightly different worded. For example, if it's sentence correction, it might be a little different, you know. And also, one more uh, recommendation for me. Mm -hmm. I had only uh, 2020 OG, uh, and uh, I did all of the questions, obviously. But as you know, the GMAT retires, um, for example, if you have 2010 uh, OG, uh, some probably 50% of the questions are retired now. So what I would do in your place is that go to GMAT Club and they have a, a really uh, great filter system and uh, choose, uh, for example, OG from 90s or from 2000 or early mm -hmm. years. And you'll just discover that there are lots of advanced questions uh, which are just totally new for you. Uh, so yeah, it's a good. It's a good idea to focus on older tests, um, and we will just get official questions very easily. So a couple of takeaways from that: the first being that you saved your official questions until the end, so to speak, until you were grounded in your fundamentals. Uh, you invested a lot into the official resources, the mocks, uh, everything you could find essentially, which is a great strategy. Uh, and you leverage it to the best of your abilities. And I think that's a terrific strategy. Uh, if I can follow up just a little bit on that, you bought all the mocks you could. How were you in your mind splitting those up? So you took your first mock three weeks in. 
at, at what no. point did you say, okay, I'm ready to take my second. Okay, I'm ready to take my third. Okay, I'm ready to take my fourth. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, after the first um, half cold mock test, uh, as I said, uh, because of my um, job, I had to take a time off from GMAT. And when I renewed my studies, I had to uh, refresh those um, refresh those uh, topics in my head. Uh, and I didn't do the second mock. Uh, uh, I wanted to not to get demotivated. Uh, so I didn't want to see the score that was lower than my previous mock test score. So I did the mock test only after I felt that I ma made some significant progress uh, mm -hmm. on my OG questions and MBA.com practice um, questions. Uh, and I knew I was making a progress because um, those softwares calculate your uh, percentage of your correct scores, for example, in advanced questions or medium questions. So whenever I felt more confident and I knew that, uh, and I uh, reviewed the old questions which which I um, um, incorrect, which I did incorrectly, and I knew that oh, what a silly uh, mistake I made. Now I get why in sense correction that, that, that's they, they don't like it. Yeah, when I felt that I made the progress, I. Um, went and do, did a new uh, new mock test. Uh, it was like three weeks interval, two weeks interval. But in the end, I had about three tests uh, and um, the official tests left. And I made with uh, uh, with the small intervals. And while that's very interesting that uh, mm, uh, one in one of the tests, I scored a perfect 800. And it was like... Um, wow. I know, yeah, it, 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 was, it was a great feeling, uh, but uh, I knew that uh, in the next mock test, probably I would not repeat the, um, the result and I would get a bit discouraged. So uh, yeah, it was a mixed feeling, you know, it was a good feeling, but also I knew that uh, some of the, I uh, always, um, even in the on the real exam, um, uh, there are about three, sentence correction questions where I'm down to two options and I had to make 50 50 decision and mm -hmm. uh on the when when on the mock I scored 800 I got lucky and uh, on the, those three four instances I just uh, chose a, a correct one and on mm -hmm. the other mocks and on the real exam I didn't get so lucky but to me, it's quite decent score, so no regrets. But yeah, eight hundred <laughs> was like eight hundred was like my mind let blew. I I wrote to Jim at Ninja straight away. I posted on Jim at Club because I was really excited. Like, uh, and it, it was like very late night, like two a.m. But I did it anyway because I had scheduled, and uh, I, I really um, expected a very low score, score even lower than the previous ones. And when it was like 800 in the official mock, I just, yeah, it blew my mind. <laughs> and rightfully so. An 800 is a perfect score. Kind of hard to beat that. Kind of hard to go up from there. Uh, and I never thought of it as a double-edged sword. But if you do look at it as I always need to improve, once you hit that ceiling, there's you can't break through it. That's perfect. Uh so, I mean, kudos to you. It sounds like a really well thought out way to approach your mocks. And it seems like you took the time to evaluate what would be best for you, both mentally and physically. I want to ask and sort of go back a little bit. You mentioned not wanting to hit that point of, oh, my mock uh, took a step down. I, I scored worse than I had previously. Now I'm a little defeated here. Did you hit any walls in your preparation? And if so, how are you able to overcome them? Um, uh, I think that uh, it was when I uh, tried um, EGMAT course. Uh, they, it's a very good course to be clear. Um, to be clear, I do not want to uh, give a bad review or something. It works very well for many students. So if you like it, go for it. It's where it has very good customer service from EGMAT. They are ready to help you. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it, uh, I took their sentence correction course. And when I went back to the OG questions, 
I um I discovered that I missed the questions which I mm -hmm. made uh, correctly previously. So uh, it's not a good feeling when <laughs> you, you, you did some questions correctly previously and now you're making mistakes. Uh, and that was uh, because um, uh, before, before that uh, course, I just did most of the sentence correction questions half like intuitively. And uh, yeah, just by practicing, practicing and trusted my gut feelings um, sometimes. And mm -hmm. after Ijimad, I started uh, very strictly uh, thinking uh, with some rules. And that wasn't a good point. Uh, for example, there are lots of, uh, uh, lots of rules that can be bended in uh, GMAT. And th that's the one of the reasons that I uh, recommend uh, GMAT Ninja and uh, his um, uh, posts, uh, because uh, we should make a distinction and a target test prep also. Uh, the target test prep on uh, their um, sentence correction uh, uh, module, they have, um, they uh, divide the rules into a strict rule and like more like gray area rule. So some, some rules can be um, violated and some can't be violated. And that's a very good distinction. And as Jim Mad Ninja often says, there are very few absolute rules on a sentence correction. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, after after that happened, I become a, a, a bit discouraged, but uh, I just um, got my morale up and I just did uh, practice official practice questions, official practice questions, uh, some posts on GMAT Club, explanations. Uh, and yeah, I, then I had a very a, a good idea what mistakes I was making. Uh, and yeah, I, I then improved my percentage in advanced questions. Uh, became like 90% of sentence correction, which was a very great result for me. Uh, yeah, and regarding reading comprehension, I did not have such a thing. Uh, before, uh, when I uh, made uh, first mock, uh, took a first mock, uh, official mock, I made, uh, I guess, one or two uh, mistakes on reading comprehension. But I didn't really study uh, for reading comprehension at all. Uh, I just read lots of English books. When I, whenever I had um, time, I read everything from like philosophy to some fiction, like very classic books like Franz Kafka and uh, some maybe some other books like existentiality. Everything like maybe I didn't understand like ten percent of the words there. But I was reading and reading and reading, and it really helped. And it really helped. I also read some uh, whenever I had, for example, in the office, if I had a lunch break, I made sure that I opened economist.com and I read two or three articles there. Also, it really helps. Other than that, I don't really know uh, what to suggest with reading comprehension. There mm -hmm. are not really lots of uh, like tricks or like shortcuts or something like that. You just may practice, you know, uh, what kind of answers do they appreciate? For example, they do not allow uh, uh, using like harsh words, uh, like reprimanded or like refuted very, very seldom when they use. Uh, yeah, like you just get used to it. You just have the feeling which um, answer uh, feels a uh, more like GMAT uh, style answer and just read, uh, just improve your English. And that's all I can't recommend anything else. So funny enough, and luckily enough, I have written a guide on reading comprehension on GMAT club. So has GMAT Ninja. So mm -hmm. if anybody is struggling, I would recommend going to one of those two sources. Uh, but <laughs> so if I may recap here, it sounds like EG mat, egg mat, however you want to call it. It sounds like that didn't work for you. And by the way, uh, David isn't being compensated by anybody or anything for being here today. He's doing this out of the goodness of his heart. Nobody is holding a gun to his head to say positive or negative things about companies. Yeah, I have no affiliations. <laughs> I have no sponsor, so I'm uh, very honest. Uh, yeah. By the way, GMAT Ninja, does, GMAT yeah. Ninja does not even have uh, some online course. I approached him to buy some online course or book. He doesn't have anything. So there is no way I can 
I can't even have an affiliate link or something like that. So it's just my like honest reviews. What worked for me, it doesn't mean that it won't uh, work for you. Of course, everyone is different, uh, but like that's just my experience. Which is great. That's why we want you here. But Eggmat, not so good. Tar test prep, ironically, for sentence correction, you really enjoyed. Yeah, I never uh, used uh, that for a quant a quantitative part. I uh, mm -hmm. I didn't use any um, apart from uh, Manhattan guides uh, and advanced uh, quant from Manhattan. I didn't use anything like any program for quantitative. I didn't dedicate it too much time uh, to quant. Uh, so yeah. I used yeah um, for T um of uh, TTP I used for sentence correction. Uh, they still have beta a beta version, uh, so mm -hmm. they are adding new adding new articles and uh, somehow refining. So yeah, maybe when if you decide to sign up, um, it will be even better than what was for me. And that's wonderful to hear. Uh, TTP is known for their quant. Uh, and I, I will circle back to your quant prep in a minute because I do want to hear about it. Uh, but what I didn't hear that I'd like that I think our users would like to hear, uh, a what did you use for critical reasoning? You said you read for our, uh, you said you read a lot for reading comp, and you said you use TTP for SC. What did you use for critical reasoning, if anything? And beyond that, how many questions would you say you did per day? on the verbal side, given that that was your weaker of the two sides of the GMAT. Okay. Uh, regarding the critical um, uh, critical reasoning, I called it logical reasoning for some reason. Uh, yeah, um, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, I didn't uh, I didn't use anything uh, like specific for it. Uh, uh, I am, um, how to say, I was naturally very good at it. Uh, for example, in Georgia, we have some entrance exams and we have an exam which is very, very close to uh, SAT and GMAT and it has the critical, it's called the logic theory. Uh, it's parallel to critical reasoning. And yeah, in this exam, I scored the, I score, I became the second best scorer in the whole country. Uh, and yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like logical reasoning, uh, this uh, critical reasoning uh, was, and uh, in the university, although I studied on business, uh, we had uh, very uh, broad subjects as well. It's bachelor, yeah, uh, it's like more like a liberal arts oriented college also. I had a, a formal logic there also, and it really um, advanced my skills um, on critical reasoning. So I was were, but to be honest, I was naturally very good at it always from from the school era. Uh, and so yeah, I'm not the best person to um, ask about how to improve uh, critical okay. reasoning. Yeah, but um, there are um, there are uh, some um, uh, very uh, good points uh, to get from the guides that are uh, written by the moderators on GMAT Club. Even me, uh, after the format, uh, formal logic course in my university, after that um, uh, achievements back in my school days, uh, I still had some questions about uh, uh, some questions about the OG um, practice tests. Uh, sometimes uh, there are questions that I do not agree even now. Uh, with the OG answer, really, like I do not agree, but they are where you sell, they are not where, yeah, where seldomly such a question pops up. And mm -hmm. there are uh, like um, some of the very basic uh, and uh, basic rules that will be uh, good for you. Actually, everyone talks that um, OG bundle uh, theory part um, is uh, rubbish, but uh, you can read their uh, critical reasoning um, a theory, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a very concentrated, very condensed, uh, several pages, but it point uh, covers some of uh, very interesting points there. Um, how double negation works, uh, how inference, uh, how the, the, all of these logical uh, words that you want to. There are some elements from formal logic um in their guides so yeah like uh, if you have uh, some free time um you can definitely uh, take up an introductory course in formal logic 
mm-hmm. although the OG uh, states that um, formal logic is not mandatory, uh, but they also stated it will help you definitely as the as the knowing English grammar will help you in sentence correction. So if you have a free time, I would recommend you to, it's, it's very interesting for me to learn this formal logic. Uh, apart from GMAT, it will help you just in life. I guess it's very interesting subject. Just uh, take up some introductory uh, classes in formal logic, uh, logic mm-hmm. all of these formal operations. I am 100%, <clears throat> I believe 100% this will help you and you won't waste your time. Yeah, and apart from that, just do um, just do the um, uh, official questions. In verbal, uh, everybody, I should agree with the OG legends on GMAT Club. They all say that you should not use any uh, non-official. You should avoid uh, non-official questions, especially on uh, in verbal. Uh, mm-hmm. And I agree with Quant. You can use uh, non-official questions. Uh, because, for example, for Mahetan, their quant uh, questions are a bit harder, so you will just get the uh, yeah, you'll be you will get accustomed to harder questions and you'll be uh, surprised, uh, very nicely when on the real uh, exam, uh, very easy questions will pop up. So, I agree with your comments about uh, only using official sources for uh, the verbal side, especially sentence correction. Uh, the, the biggest pitfall you can make is by using non-official sources, getting s- some misinformation on that side and then hurting yourself in the end. I would also recommend LSAT for reading comp and CR. So that way you don't exhaust all your OG questions right off the bat. Those are equally as good. And frankly, they're a little bit challenge, a little bit more challenging. And Dave, that's actually where uh, on the LSAT, they call critical reasoning, logical reasoning. So that may be where you got that from. Uh, I be, uh, I actually bought um, ordered on Amazon some LCAT uh, book, but I didn't even open it because I ran out of time, uh, so I had no opportunity to look at the LC, uh, LCAT questions. But I still ha- have it it's on my shelf somewhere here. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a big proponent of using the LCAT. Uh, I think it can do wonders for students. Uh, and to go back just a little bit further on your points about logical reasoning and just having the formal logic, uh, I was speaking with somebody on the forum. I don't know if she's watching. If she is, hi. But if she isn't, oh, oh well. But she was uh, blown away by the critical reasoning section. And she was amazed at schools. I believe she's over in Europe. Don't teach us. And in America, we don't focus on logic for that matter either. And she was just so astounded that we didn't do this, that she felt she needed to almost reform the school systems uh, to get that involved. So uh, being able to use logic in real life, it it helps. I've been able to use it in my everyday life to argue with friends and they get pissed off because they can't beat me in an argument. Uh, They don't know that I work for GMAT Club and that I'm a resident expert in the field. So (laughs) they're, they're trying to run up a, steep hill that they just they can't get to the top of uh but if i may follow up one uh, one more question for the verbal then we can switch to the quant because i know students are asking about that how many questions a day did you practice across all three sections or Mm -hmm. did you do uh because you said you were weakest with sc was it almost exclusively sc and if so how many questions a day no, no, no. When I say that I dedicated most of the time to sense correction, I do not mean that I didn't solve all the, all the other questions. I solved all of the questions in every module, reading comprehension, critical reasoning. I solved all of the official questions which I had. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, uh, when I say that I dedicated more time to SC, I mean that I uh, did it several times. I read lots of guides. I uh, read, uh, watched lots of videos. Uh, but when it comes to OG questions and the official practice sets from the MBA.com, I did every question, uh, reading comprehension, critical reasoning. To be honest, I did not have a very strict uh, routine. How many okay. questions am I going to do in a day? I believe that... Um, 
it was uh, it depend if i may uh, if i had to do some advanced questions it was about 50 maybe when i was just um, um filtering from uh, the uh, from the website uh, from og yeah it's a very um uh, one more um tip from me uh for the theory read from the paper based like books because i you can hi highlight you can make uh, your notes and it really helps but uh, gmat practice although i'm a proponent of, uh, of like physical books uh, and mm -hmm. that's the reason i bought a physical og i still opted to practice on the web uh, because you can, yeah, it calculates you, your scores, you can uh, filter it, so you can uh, manually construct your practice sets. And if I, for example, choose to make uh, solve easy questions, uh, I could like solve 101 in a day, for example. It really, it really wow. okay. depends. I didn't have a very like strict rule. It really uh, depended. I had a very strict rule, for example, uh um how many days uh, did i have uh, to finish for example og verbal review uh and i had some rough estimates and uh, yeah i then i i knew how much time approximately i had and i uh, variated my time i dedicated more time to advanced questions and with easy questions i was just solving um, you know very <clears throat> very quickly and that's all uh, so to answer somebody's question, where do we find LSAT questions? The forum under the verbal uh, section has, for critical reasoning, I think we're over 2,000 LSAT questions currently. You can buy them on Amazon if you want in, in a book, but we have so many on our website currently that that would be my first recommended stop. We also have them for RC as well, so uh, please go there. David, I want to follow up a little bit on the fact that you said you could do X amount of questions in a day. I think you said you could do 100 a day. I'm hoping that was hyperbole. Uh, no, that was did... really. oh, on the weekends. <laughs> really, really, I'm not even joking. And I, I'm, uh, I'm not trying to uh, make some impression of superhuman or something like that, but it's doable. Uh, it's, it, it's, it will take you with easy questions. I didn't need a two minutes per question i needed for on average maybe one minute and like 10 seconds so mm -hmm. 100 100 question is not uh, it will take you like two hours and maybe then you can review uh because i made very rarely any mistakes on easy questions i needed another 30 minutes uh, to review the, the errors or or even uh and one more tip by the way when you are doing a question, uh, a pra practice set, uh, do not um, do not wait uh, till the end, uh, so you get uh, the wrong answers, and then you solely review the wrong answers. When you notice that you are not firm in your beliefs when you are choosing uh, one of the answers, you should highlight the question, anyways. And even if you uh, score correctly, you should get back to it and analyze the question. So it's a very bad idea to focus solely on the wrong questions because some of the right questions can teach you more than uh, some questions that you got wrong uh, just uh, by accident. And this is what I was gonna sort of hit on. Uh, how long did you review each question that you got wrong? Oh my God, that's, that, that's a really um, complicated question. Um, that that's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, th there are questions uh, which, as I said, I do not even agree nowadays. And I was, um, I still, whenever, if I have a chance to meet with my former uh, logic, uh, for example, lecturer, the professor, I would bring the question and discuss with him. There are questions that I really, uh, I really dedicated much time. But to give you uh, an average, um, like approximate answer, it was probably maybe three, four minutes. And what I did, or maybe five minutes even, what I did was that I copied, um, if I had the chance, uh, some softwares do not support copy and paste. So you just um, look at the question code and that's all. You just Google it and GMAT Club will pop up. 
in GMAT Club, you can scroll down, scroll down and look for your favorite instructors. If you don't find them among them, then you can look for other people. And uh, almost any question, for almost any question, you can find definite answers on GMAT uh, Club. Uh, there are very rarely when um, some of the, maybe some of the relatively new questions, they are, they have a very small amount of answers with them. But the old mm -hmm. questions are really greatly discussed. Uh, lots of uh, pro professionals there, lots of very clever students also giving their uh, ideas. And yeah, I mean, it really helped me a lot. Uh, so I didn't have any formal instruct uh, instructor um, on GMAT uh, or tutor. Uh, I just uh, depended on the online resources and on GMAT Club. Mm, yeah. Which makes a lot of sense. Uh, the reason I ask is because reviewing questions that you get wrong is maybe the single most important thing you can do for the GMAT. And it's it's critically important that students understand that because if you take a question, whether you got it right or wrong, to then say, oh, well, I made, no, I just got it wrong. Oh, oh well, and moving on, you're you're essentially wasting the question. So please keep that in mind as you're preparing. Uh, that it's not enough just to answer the question. You have to really do a deeper dive. David, I want to sort of pivot now to the quant section and you may give me a similar answer that you did for verbal. Uh, did you have a set number of questions that you did per day for quant given that was your stronger side? Uh, did you focus on individual sections that you knew you were weaker in? What was that process like? Um, with quant, uh, I... Uh, um... Most probably the average time it took me to solve a single question was like less than for the verbal part because mm -hmm. on quant easy questions was like, uh, it didn't take uh, any time at all, like maybe 40 seconds, like a minute maximum. Um, and I solved really without uh, speaking hyperbolically or somehow uh, but realistically, I solved easy questions, 100, maybe even more. Uh, when it came to advanced questions, there were some questions that I didn't answer correctly and I had to practice for it. I looked at the underlying concepts. Uh, uh, also, I really recommend everyone who is watching the uh, live right now to download the um, GMAT Club has a really fantastic uh, quantitative guide or I don't know what it's called. It's uh, mostly made by Bunuel, I guess. Um, it's, yes, uh, yeah, but uh, so that we do have a, I think we call it a book. It's yeah, on yeah, GMAT, it, it is yeah. on GMAT Club. It was written uh, by the supercomputer known as Bunuel. It was written by Walker, who is somebody who has come and gone and come back to our forum, uh, mm -hmm. another OG legend, and BB, the founder and uh, literal OG uh, took mm -hmm. part in that as well. So that's a good that is a good source, and it's free. Yeah, it's it's really great source. I mean, uh, it's um, pretty advanced. Um, do not accept uh, some of the concepts was really uh, especially for number properties. Uh, I had to really dedicate some time to it because in high school, after the high school, I rarely touched any uh, mess or quantitative at all. Uh, I guess I only had some statistics class in my university, that, that, that's it. Uh, calculus, but calculus is a totally different topic. And <clears throat> yeah, number properties in, in Georgian schools, uh, they do not teach, uh, th there is a very less emphasis on number properties. So most of the things were new, totally new for me, like totally new. And uh, Bunuel or, and uh, the other members who wrote the book or uh, somehow contributed to it uh, did a really great job. And it has also uh, a very few but very advanced uh, questions in it, uh, mm -hmm. which are really, really pretty advanced. So I would really recommend you, uh, whoever wants to score a perfect score on quantitative, uh, uh to focus on this book uh and focus on collections from Bunuel. apart from uh so practice uh, i would say uh, some uh, someone who wants to score 50 or 51 to practice from official of course do every official even easy ones never never skip the easy ones do the easy ones also it won't take too much time 
people mm-hmm. just overestimate uh, the OG um, um, the count of questions. It's need, it's really not that much. If you do, uh, yeah, large amounts, you will run out of it. <clears throat> and I really um, um, can recommend to use that book and use the hard question collections from Bunuel. Bunuel collects uh, the questions from a resource from Mahatin. Some questions he just himself wrote. Some questions uh, from old OGs some questions from other members. Yeah, just um, after or even in the process of uh, focusing on official materials also parallelly, you should ref, um, or read, this, read, uh, read that book many times, highlight, uh, memorize the formulas, it will help you. And um, just do the, uh, those uh, very nice uh, uh, compilations that Bunuel has on, on the forum. Perfect. Couldn't have asked for more. So, folks, we're on the home stretch here. We have about 10 minutes left. We may run a little bit over, depending on how fast we can get through this. Uh, so, David, are you, ready, are you ready to answer the last few questions here? You've done a great job so far. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. And by I'm the ready. way, and thank you for shouting out GMAT Club. Um, I don't know if anyone can see yeah. my shirt, but is that the right side? Yes, right side. Uh, <laughs> Go GMAC club. Always got to always have to represent it when you can. So tell me about IR and AWA. Did you spend any time on them? If so, how long or, or were they afterthoughts? Um, okay, so a very interesting uh, thing. When I uh, wrote the um, first uh, mock exam, the cold one, uh, I uh, got a very bad score on integrated reasoning or IR. Uh, it was a uh, five or six oh, that, that's and not bad yeah yeah but like i thought oh my god like because everybody's saying it's very easy and the problem was that i ran out of time mm-hmm. uh and i had the feeling that oh it will take uh, me uh, much time to uh somehow master it also but mm-hmm. <clears throat> in the end uh, i ended uh, not practicing it at all um, even I did not practice the OG, uh, some OG questions, and I also purchased IR um, uh, resource from officialmba.com. I purchased it and I never opened it because I ran out of time. Uh, yeah, okay. but I did IR, uh, e- e- yes, and the one also I should um, uh, say, say it that uh, I, uh, when I uh, wrote my official mocks, for the first, uh, for the second, third, fourth official mock, I didn't uh, do the IR with them. Mm-hmm. I just omitted because I was so eager to know my score uh, with the quantitative part and the verbal part. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, but in the end, I focused on the official. I restarted the official mocks and I did the IR at first. And mm-hmm. then I skipped the, skipped the uh, quantitative variable. And so in the end, I maybe uh, did four or five full IR tests. And it was it was uh, really um, enough for me to score perfect score on the real exam. And I did not make any single mistake also. It's a well-known wow. fact, that, uh, fact that you can still score a perfect score uh even making several uh, mistakes there but i didn't make any so yeah maybe the at first time uh, i didn't uh, was even introduced to the uh, uh, concept the format and i just ran out of time apart from that i guess if you are a uh, good we- with the verbal part and with the quantitative part just uh, practice with the official practice uh, exams and you won't need much regarding the essay uh i also purchased the official software uh it's not software you have six attempts or Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it's the official algorithm and they score you it will help you very much it's a real bliss uh, because for toyfel there is no such thing and uh, you should um, trust uh, some tutor or your friend to review your essay and score you and yeah i would recommend you to uh, buy buy uh, that uh, six attempts and there is also um, I'm not a big proponent of templates. I never I never use them uh, even in my school days or any exams. But if you're really struggling with an essay, probably you should consider looking at, at the templates. Uh, and yeah, 
it will help you maybe. Very nice. So now let's focus on test week leading up to your take and the test day itself. Did you do anything uh, different? Did you do anything noteworthy during the run up to your test or was it status quo? Nothing changed, just stayed in your routine. I did and some of them I regret, some of them I don't. So uh, the I had about three or four days uh, to, um, in the end, uh, I thought I would dedicate those days um, specifically to IR and uh, SA, but I ended up reviewing my uh, notes for the notes for the sentence correction. Mm -hmm. uh, and I made my personal notes for uh, from TTP course uh, in a Word document and for from um, from Ninja's uh, reviews also, that's just my personal notes. And I had small error log. I didn't use the error logs too much. I only wrote down the questions which we are really, really like concept, co conceptually challenging to me. Uh, there were about 20 questions in sense question or 30 that I really had to know the concept and refresh it in, in my mind. Uh, yeah, and so I um, I was a little less confident about the essay and the IR still on the exam day because I knew that I cheated on them and I used the, their time for some correction. And mm -hmm. uh, regarding the exam uh, morning, uh, uh, so I made sure that I bought some protein bar or something like that. And then, as I um, told you before the live video session, I drink lots of water, just in general. And that day I made a mistake that I drank coffee and I have a low tolerance to caffeine because I don't drink. Like when I, whenever I even regular Americano will like make my heart pump like two X times, you know, like it's a bad idea for me. Yeah. So I, I still drank it and, um, Mm, it, it was good at first because I had energy. I started to do the verbal, by the way, the verbal and quantitative, then then the essay and IR and essay. Um, it was good and verbal, and but then I had uh, I had uh, an urge to drink a water, and uh, in Georgia I I don't know if it's international rules, but in Georgia they do not allow you to bring the water, so I had to waste my exam time in quantitative about three minutes or even four minutes to to go from uh, the room to they scan your palm uh, then you drink water then you then they scan your palm um, i mean again and then you get back to the room and for that reason i had to skip one question in uh, quantitative so i would say that uh, eating a protein bar is a very important you should do it but if you are not accustomed to caffeine do not do not try it it's a bad idea Somehow, if your test center allows you to bring water to stay hydrated, it will help you and take that opportunity. If not, then I don't know what you should do. Fair enough. So two two questions, and then we'll wrap this shindig up. Uh, and for those of you who ask questions in the chat, I believe I've answered, or I'm sorry, I believe David has answered all of them. I believe I've asked him all of them. Yeah, and also uh, I I uh, asked um, uh, GMAT Club representative to give my Facebook uh, page there because I'm not uh, maybe as active on GMAT Club right now, but you can still write me on GMAT uh, Club forum or on my Facebook page. Uh, there are both links there. Uh, if you have some questions, I would be happy to help you whenever I have time. So yeah, you can approach me anytime. So we have not posted that yet. I'll make sure okay. it gets up there at some point. Uh, so two last questions. The first one is around anxiety management. Yeah, you, know, you don't seem like the nervous type. You seem like you were very well prepared. Did you feel anxious or nervous about the test? If so, how'd you deal with it? Mm, uh, okay. Um, I'm actually, uh, I'm too accustomed to standardized tests because I took CFA exam and lots of exams really. Uh, so I, and even in the school, I'm not a very nervous person, naturally, uh, but GMAT is a bit stressful. I should admit it because you look at the clock all the time 
and that gets on your nerves and that that's uh, i had that uh, mini uh anxiety attack uh, when uh, i uh, spent those three four minutes on quantitative and i had to skip one question totally it wasn't a great feeling because you know that uh, well, odds are that you are missing a point there um mm -hmm. In general, I don't know, when you do the official mock tests uh, in uh, more or less official settings, so you don't take breaks, uh, there is no distraction, and you don't cheat it, um, on the exam, you will gain that confidence naturally, I think. Because it's the same formats, same questions. As I wrote on my uh, brief, uh, please do not believe the people who say that, oh, official, um, the real quantitative is so hard that... I guess I don't know. Either people are paranoid, someone or or are proposed. Some of them may be purposely doing to uh, make someone afraid. Uh, um, some maybe someone had a bad day there. I don't know. But please do not mm -hmm. get discouraged. Do not listen. Uh, the real quantitative section. Maybe online is something different. I never tried online because I didn't want an asterisk on top of my score. But the real test, uh, I mean, on the real test center, official mm -hmm. uh, quantitative se section is like almost the same. Like you should, you should not worry about it at all. There is nothing very different. There is the <clears throat> even it got on my nerves before the exam because I read and everybody saying that oh, GMAT like ten years ago was so easy and now the questions are like. Oh my God! Like uh, that, that, that's not uh, remotely like the uh, true. Uh, so don't trust those people. Uh, just uh, it's uh, probably the same that you'll be practicing. Um, that you'll be seeing on the official mocks on the OG questions. There's nothing to be afraid of at all. Good advice. And by the way, I'm glad you brought up the online GMAT. Uh, just so I spoke with three ad comms on Thursday, uh, one from Yale, one from Michigan, one from Duke. And the, these were fairly high up people. And this was YouTube. So if you haven't seen it yet, I encourage everybody to do so. It's called Straight Talk. And the reason we called it Straight Talk was because we were simply asking questions that needed to be answered in terms of debunking myths and rumors. And one of them was, do you view the online GMAT differently? And the resounding answer across the board was, no, it's a GMAT official. We trust their process. There's no disadvantage to having the online GMAT. So anyone who's watching who heard that there may be an asterisk there, that that is not true. The online GMAT is, in their eyes, the equivalent of the in-person GMAT. So please don't worry about that. Did not to call you off, David. <laughs> I, I just don't want our, our our viewers starting to freak out about something. All right. So with that said, what are your future plans? You have this fantastic score. You have to be applying to some decent schools. Yeah. What, no, what are they? No, so uh, at first, I'm preparing for my TOEFL. Uh, I'll, I'll probably take the TOEFL after a month. Now, then I'll start the application process, the essays. I want all of the applications to be sent before September, the mid-September, so <clears throat> the first round. You know, I aim for like Ivy League plus some of the maybe maybe Stanford, maybe Chicago, some of the best schools out there uh, because of my work experience, because of the project, extracurriculum activities, and GMAT score. So yeah, I have very high expectations. Uh, it, it will be very rough five uh, or four months uh, because I have to brush my ap application, my essays, recommendation letters, everything, everything. So yeah, I'm very optimistic and uh, I'm also prepared to put the energy and time in it. Well, any school would be lucky to have you. You seem like a very <laughs> accomplished human being uh, and we hope for great things for you. Thank By you. the way, if you are considering using a consultant, uh, I did a video on that last week. So <laughs> we have plenty of content for all your GMAT needs uh, and business school application needs. So if you're considering that, I recommend seeing that. But if yeah, you seem like you're very intelligent. So if you go off and do it on your own, uh, best of luck to you. So I, I, probably, I, I'll, I'll probably need an advisor and consultant, of course, because uh, that's the professional help um, will 
aid me. Uh, so yeah, I will look at it definitely. And uh, yeah, I will use the resources and I'll probably hire someone from GMAT Club. Wonderful. Uh, I uh, our reviews are mostly five star for our for the consultants that partner with us. I would recommend doing a deeper dive than just seeing the list of 15 consultants with five star reviews. Uh, but that said, uh, I, I didn't lie about anything prior. As I say, I lied about having two more questions. I have one more for you, unfortunately, Okay. Uh, which is do you, do you have any last comments, something we didn't hit on that you feel the people should know? Uh, anything on your mind that you want to get off your chest? Uh, mm. The floor is yours. Uh, I don't know. I would um, give an advice probably that um, whenever, for, for um, non-native speakers, uh, because that's my background, for non-native uh, speakers, uh, uh, whenever you are dedicating time for GMAT studies, also dedicate some time to just read English literature and English articles, just just learn English. Uh, it's not an English test, everybody says that, but um, being a native speaker, I guess, is an advantage. Um, so, yeah, just uh, focus on, even if you don't have a time uh, uh, currently for GMAT and you are are planning to start your preparing process in the future, maybe one year mm -hmm. in the future. Still, you can start uh, uh, um, uh, improving your English skills right now. It won't hurt you. It it will really definitely help you. Just uh, listen to some audio books, read some audio books. I don't know. It will help you very much. Mm -hmm. That's for non-native speakers. And for native speakers, I don't know what to advise. Just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just uh, learn uh, because in the US uh, and I don't know about other English speaking countries if the uh, formal logic is neglected please re uh, please learn formal logic uh, it's very interesting I don't know about your interest but in general it's uh, quite interesting it's more than the GMAT so it will be useful for more than the GMAT uh, if you have free time you can also check out some philosophy not very advanced some basic philosophy also, which will help you. The, the, the formal logic is from ancient Greece. Uh, it has its roots in ancient Greek philosophy. So if you start from it, it won't hurt you. Formal logic will help you in critical reasoning. Also, it will definitely help you in uh, reading comprehension as well. Um, yeah, because there, there are lots of inference questions. Uh, yeah, but you, I don't have any advice for native speakers about um uh, about verbal parts mm -hmm. uh, because they have a fair advantage already <laughs> oh we really don't we really don't trust me i was just about to say that there is if in fact if you're a native speaker watching this go through sentence correction with a fine tooth comb because the the lessons we've learned, the way we speak, though you read a sentence and you you think with your ear like oh that sounds correct wrong wrong i wish we had sound effects to be to make like a big oh just buzzer sound don't do it read sc go through it all yeah yeah i mean they should they should dedicate lots of time but i mean some questions are really vocabulary based or some phrasal verbs and some phraseologisms and you know b b being just an native speaker helps um yeah wonderful well, David, thank you so much for joining. I'm going to leave us with one last thought, which is that uh, you seem to have a fan here, uh, Miss B. Pasha. I think that's how you pronounce it. If if not, I do apologize. Nice. Uh, you know, David's a good looking guy. He's well accomplished. He's going to be going to a good school, getting a nice MBA. He's studying for a CFA if he doesn't have it already. And his Facebook profile is going to be posted right here. Now, I'm not saying I'm Cupid right now, <laughs> but I am willing to see where we can take this. So I want an update, David. It, it, should this happen, I want an update in a week or a month or in a couple of months. I want a GMAT Club love story. <laughs> I, <laughs> you, you are turning GMAT Club in Tinder or what? <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting there quite yet. But I, I want to make it happen because the first time we have it happen, we have proof of concept. And now we can really get the ball rolling. You know, you know if GRE continues to become more popular and GMAT, um, I mean GMAT Club will 
gain less popularity, then you should consider to making some Tinder like <laughs> Tinder like improvements. We've discussed it. We've, yeah. discussed it. Um, we've done a lot of pushback, uh, but we'll continue to explore. And uh, should anything happen, my name uh, on the forum is in deep red right now. That's changing to pink. It's going to be love stories everywhere. So I'm going to be shooting heart shaped arrows. Uh, <laughs> but on that note, David, thank you so much for joining us here thank today. You. you were a pleasure. And I think our users got a lot out of it. Thank you so much. And wish you guys uh, the best luck. Uh, just don't be nervous. Read English, practice official questions, and you'll be good. Great advice. Dave, we hope to see you around the forum. Thank you.